What is a frame rate and why does it matter in films? Let's find out. Welcome to Cinema Shoot Masterclass. I'm so glad you're all here again. So, what is a frame rate and why does it matter in films? The action or process of moving something is called motion. Everything your eyes are seeing right now is in motion. Films are made in motion, but despite its name, when you watch a film, you do not see a motion picture. In film theory, they call it beta phase. It's too deep. I don't want to get into that. This is, this is just the beginning of video. So basically, beta phase is what you're saying is not motion. Your eyes are monitoring, it's capturing multiple pictures, series of still images going through rapid speed, creating the illusion, the perception of motion. That's called beta phase. So everything you see looks like it's in motion, like my hand, but it's a series of still images put through and chopped through each other. Frame rate. The number of individual images shown within one second is called frame rate. Frame rate is the frequency rate at which consecutive images are captured or displayed. This is the term applies equally to film and video cameras, computer graphics, and motion capture systems. Frame rate may also be called the frame frequency and be expressed in Hertz. That's also correct. The human visual system can process about 10 to 12 images per second, also known as the FPS, frame per second. So and you can perceive them individually while higher rates are perceived as motion. Human hands motions are faster than human eyes motion and that's why magicians can trick you with the slides of hands and move. The hands are faster than the eyes and that's where it comes from basically. Early silent films had stated like frame rates anywhere from 16 to 24 frames per second FPS like Charlie Chaplin films. Some films are made out of 12, 16, 24 or more. When you hear the frame rates of a video with 16 FPS frame per second, it means there are 16 still images in one second of that film. Basically, in 10 seconds, your eyes are seeing 160 images. Sound film. So when the sound film was introduced in 1926, variation in film speed were no longer tolerated as the human ear is more sensitive than the eye to change in frequency. Many theaters had shown silent films at 22, 26 FPS, which is why the industry chose 24 FPS for sound film as a compromise. From 1927 to 1930, as various studios updated equipment, the rate of 24 FPS became a standard for 35 mm sound film. 24 FPS was the best frame rate for sound comprehension while using the least possible amount of film. 24, 25 FPS is ideal for home cinema, daily vlogs and YouTube or even cinematic film. Anything lower than 24 or 25 makes the video jerky and choppy because they lack frames. Today only television, news, live broadcast events and soap operas are getting recorded with 30 frames per second or, or also known as 30 FPS. Something to consider, if you're working with cameras or editing software and instead of 24 or 25 you see 23.976 frames per second or instead of 30 you encounter 29.976, don't panic. It's the same thing. In fact, it's the accurate number for frame rate back in the early days of filmmaking. The machinery that people had to work, they had different computing regime. We only call it 24 or 30 just for our own convenience. Okay, so look at the map. Some countries are using PAL and some countries are using NTFS. What is a PAL? It stands for Phase Alternating Line or PAL, some people call it PAL. It's a color encoding system for analog television used in broadcast television systems in most countries, mostly Europeans. So it basically it broadcasts at 6 to 5 line for 50 fields at 25 frames per second at 576 interlaced videos. NTSC color encoding is an abbreviation for National Television System Committee. You might hear NTFS stands for not the same color, but I've never found any science behind it, so it's not true. So don't be surprised if you're working with some overseas clients and if they ask you for a different frame rate output, they are all a standard. Europe and West Asian countries mostly work on a PAL system and some other including USA and Japanese are NTFS. Right now I am recording this masterclass on a 24 frame per second PAL encoder. So at 24 or 25 FPS the film travels through the projector at the rate of 456 millimeters per second. So this allows simple two-bladed shutter to give a project a series of images at 48 frames per second. Now moving to 48 FPS also known as the HFR which is a stand for higher frame rates it is included from 48 to 60 FPS and upward. So what does it do? What does the HFR or high frame rate does? It allows more room for the animators, for the editors, the animators to swift in and create a dynamic resolution when VFX are added. 
it gives them more room to collaborate. Director of the Hobbit film Peter Jackson shot the production at 48 FPS and Cameron film Avatar in 48 and 60 frames per second. 60 FPS videos in a slow motion is two and a half times slower than the footage, so it's ideal for running, parkouring, wedding films, and video games. These are the good ones. One keynote, the more you have FPS in your films, the slower they can look with keeping the same resolution. So lower frame rates creates faster motion. Now moving to 120, 120 frames per second videos, slow motion, which is like almost five times slower than the actual footage. It's amazing for haze, flare, sparkle, fire, explosion, water drizzle effects. And moving to 180 frames per second videos is going to slow down the video by almost eight times more. Skydiving, super jets flyby, and a space shuttle cameras, unless you're like experimenting something in high speed. 400, 900, 1200 frames per second. Whoo, it's a rare case. It's good if you want to catch a bullet in here. Psychological effects. You can intentionally record your films in less frames to give the impression of like real vintage films or flashback memories. This effect is also known as step printing, which is ideal for nearly 6 to 8 frames per second. Slow motion has a very unique psychological effect on humans, so make sure to learn and research about its techniques before chopping your videos. Only use it when it's needed to keep your videos impactful, otherwise it's, it's gonna look cool in the first sight, but it gets boring after about a couple of seconds. So don't lose the dynamic pace of your film, only use it when it's necessary. Quality of motion, it's a very important thing to know what your final delivery is going to look like. This is something that nobody mentions on the frame rates uh, videos. Quality of motion, also known as frame combination, are very tricky for beginners. You need to know this before you start shooting. For example, I want to shoot in 120 FPS, but I want to deliver it in 24 FPS as a final product to my client. What you're seeing right now is not the final frame rate. What you're seeing is basically the relationship of two different speeds, which is called the capture rate and presentation rate. I'll tell you the difference. Capture rate is how many frames per second your camera records. So right now I'm recording at 24 frames per second. Presentation rate is how many frames rate your audience sees in the final delivery, in the final product. So for normal speed, you should consider filming and presenting at 24 FPS, but for live events, broadcasting, or streaming, you might want to consider 30 frames per second for the recording part and 24 FPS for the presentation which allows you to stretch the video by 30% more. So that's all you need to know about frame rates to start with. I will explain more advanced about frame rates later on in this channel. So don't forget to subscribe, share our content, and please leave your questions and I will answer them to the best of my knowledge. Let me know what sort of content you like to see and how I can help you building your filming career. Have a nice day.